The ThingsCon series of events, ThingsCon.nl, is a workshops and uh, events, and anybody really interested in that sort of development field should watch us. But Iskander, tell us what you are doing with the new forms of interaction. It's your turn. If you are all hooked up. But no, or should I talk more and ask more questions? I'm just trying to keep everybody here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. So, yeah. Uh, Happy to be here on time because uh, yeah we're a little bit early but that's good. Um, now welcome to you all. Yeah, my screens are up. Uh, I like to share with you some ideas, some things that happening here in this field of uh, new things, things that are connected, and that's how that influences the way we interact with things. With um, uh, yeah, with the, the, the and how that changes the the way things work. How the core of things changes. So introduction for me, this is my digital handle. So if you're looking for me, try to find me on Iskander without an E. And as Marli Monique already told, I work for an internet agency in Amsterdam that makes digital platforms like for Green Wheels and uh, as an example, that kind of sites, websites. And I run the innovation lab that is focusing on the more new stuff, the things that happen will happen in the future, and do that a lot with together with uh, universities, students, projects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like you see here, a couple of them working on the new apps or stuff. Um, and next to that, I also organize some events, and that's first of all behavior design. That's a series of things about the yeah, design design for behavior change. And things gone, as Monique already told you. Uh, the next one will be in December, uh, the 2nd of December. And we have some salons also, June 10 in Antwerp and July 1st in Eindhoven. So be there. Uh, enough plugs. And what we do it at the labs is just start at try to make stuff and try to experiment with field stuff. So like this is an example of how you can use eye beacons. Um, in another set, in another way, so we have put a, an eye beacon in a in a stamp, a digital stamp, and, and you put it on your phone, and you get a digital image, and uh, we located all these stamps now at the at the, at the fortre fortresses of the Stanley van Amsterdam in Dutch, the defense line of Amsterdam, so you can collect your digital stamps there now. So we really it's 3D printed stamp with a beacon, and really try to make this kind of. A, Simple, uh, yeah, products to to see how this can can work. Um, another project, and it's more related also to the uh, to the new interactions, is this uh, uh, research project that we do together with um, the University of Twente and the uh, Appl University of Applied Science in Amsterdam, where they made a kind of a fabric that you can touch and someone else can feel that. Uh, we call it a kind of Internet of Touch, and we use that. For deafblind people, in the in first uh, instance, that can have that communicate via that with, with their with their parents, their loved ones, or whatever, uh, the coaches. And and what we do is especially making the back end of that. So we really focusing on how can you connect all these kind of Internet of Things, the connected products to to a system, to a to a back end where you can yeah have sensors and back end th stuff connected. Well, I want that that's. That's, and we have several projects now that that running in that way. So that's for the introduction. Um, looking to what's happening now and what will happen in the future is always hard, of course. Uh, who, who, who can really project, think what what will happen in the next years? But still, you can think about. Uh, you can see that that there are some long nose of innovation. That there are th things happening. If if it's not happening now, it will be not there in the next years to come. Uh, this is an image from. Uh, Space Odyssey, a movie at the end of the 60s, and well, you see some uh, tablets lying around. So, people envision things for the future, but uh, but you have to think about what's happening now, what's really defining what's what will be the next wave. So, this is an important moment, I think. Uh, if you look, uh, what's 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 big trend now? That's the whole business of AI, things that that are more becoming more intelligent. So, that's that's one of the things that. Uh, that we also are following a lot, um, and, and but that is not. Yeah, Google does some very good things here, or very interesting things. That there is a, uh, uh, there is now a machine or a, a thing that can 
can beat the best Go player of the world. And the interesting part is that this AI is also a bit of creative, that it really is uh, becoming a little bit more than just a learning machine. Um, but it also went sometimes, sometimes it goes wrong. So uh, Microsoft also tried it out and made a kind of a, kind of a bot that, that lives on the internet, but it really takes the best, the bad things of the internet. So it become a really uh, uh, racist kind of bot that really was not so nice. So it's not so easy yet. Um, so, but, but you see, this kind of things is happening a lot. If you go to conferences now, it was the, today on the next web conference, it's really all about that AI and, and, and that's, that's kind of stuff. Um, and what I want to share with you here is also what, what happens with these new products. Uh, so what happens with the usual products, the products we use now, uh, uh, if you add connections to it, because that's what we are doing. So if you think about coffee, for instance, um, this is a nice example I, th uh, I tried to play. Yeah, we, we, we make coffee for years and years, uh, for ages, and we started to automate this process. And we have this process now where you have this kind of machines. Um, and now we get into the Internet of Things, uh, and the current state of the Internet of Things is a little bit like this. So we put an app, an app to an, a, pr a product, to a, a machine, and we have a kind of a remote control that, that, uh, that's that's, uh, that you can use to, um, yeah, to switch on your coffee machine or to set a timer on your coffee machine. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's useful, but it's not really adding anything or not doing really anything with the connectiveness with the product. So it's re really a dumb way of, uh, of, of, of doing stuff with the Internet of Things, I think. And especially if you look to the coffee and you look a little bit further to how the coffee culture has changed with the introduction of the espresso that we really have uh, kind of personalized products now uh, so and and how that changed the way we drink coffee and in other way other, on the other hand we have all these kind of uh, coffee geeks and nerds that uh, if you look on the internet for uh, this kind of this um, aeropress stuff you can find all kind of uh, people that really into this, this 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 making of coffee in a different way um, people make games of it make games of how to, out of how to experience and taste coffee so I think if you are going to think about the new products and what you can do with these connections, you have to take in account all these kind of things and changes. And I find one, found one uh, on the uh, on Kickstarter project that, that shows a little bit how you can make a product that really uses these kind of things. So it's a little movie from a, a minute. Is there sound? Mm. I don't know. There's no sound. Yeah, that doesn't help. Well, I can also talk uh, about it. So this coffee machine tries to, uh, to do stuff like, uh, ah, there it is. I can go uh, quickly, but, but what they do is they, they do more than just making an, an uh, Making great coffee at home doesn't get easier than this. The Aroma One introduces true intelligence to kitchen appliances. After each cup, you can rate bitterness, strength, caffeine kick and texture the aroma one then learns your preference and automatically adjusts the brewing parameters to make coffee tailored to you the world of specialty coffee is full of diversity and the aroma one is designed to guide you through it the aroma one is the only coffee machine that allows you to create flights of three different beans or brews side by side this beautiful experience allows you to explore different flavors and aromas and elevates moments shared okay. with great company. So the interesting thing is that they're really thinking about what's, what is different making coffee nowadays if you are really into this culture of coffee making. Um, still, it, it's, it's not so clear what they do with the connections between the products, but that's really thinking about how change is a product if you connect it to the internet, if you make it smart, what can you do with it? So that's, that's the thing that I think interesting. And, and also to, uh, to make a comparison, you have nowadays all kind of apps that you connect to a, to, a, to a product like this car and you can see, you can warm up your car, but, but it's really not using the, the connectiveness of that product. So um, and that, that's, that's pity. So we make the things, the, the, these, these remote controls, but we're not really thinking about how these products and things change when you connect this. 
And if in the automotive world, it's you have a clear example of, of how it, how what what's changing in this world. Uh, you have this kind of Teslas. You buy a car, and the software is is very much in, very, uh, is very important for the experience of the car. So if you re every time you have a software update, you, f you have a different car. So that's that's what 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 will happen. And these cars will co going to have more more self driving experience. And if that's happening, you will get this kind of. Uh, Maybe you know this movie, but when all the cars are connected, you, you, the whole street will look different. We have, will have this kind of um, experiences. You don't, you don't know anymore. You don't have to uh, pay attention. You can make a more efficient way of, of driving. This is, of course, design fiction. This is not real, but it's really interesting to think about what will happen if all the things are connected. So. And also, you have to think about what will it do with your with the the, the, the way the street looks. Eh? When there's a, a traffic pole, a traffic light there, well, you don't need that anymore. You don't even need streets anymore, maybe. So, so it's very interesting to think about these kind of uh, things like this. So, the, the, if you think about putting connections to a product, the core of a product will change. It can adapt to its use, to the way you use it. Uh, the function of a product will change uh, when you use it. And another example of that is uh, a, a little, an older example of, uh, of, a, of a company that makes a kind of uh, a bird. It's the company doesn't exist anymore, but a de design company that did a rethink of how a washing machine will look if you, if you use these, uh, these smart things. So it's also a very short. In our second prototype, CloudWash, okay. there are lots of directions we could have taken the interface. Uh, we looked at pushing the whole interface to the phone to leave a very simple fascia, or to go the other way and embed a touch screen. Leaving those temptations aside, we've resolved it to the clearest representation and controls of the high value functions. Of course, there's an interface on your phone, but to run a wash, you only need the buttons and dials on the machine. It seems that most people don't use more than two or three wash types. On the left, there are three customizable presets for the washes you most commonly use. The center controls timing. You can delay a wash and see plainly what time it will end. And on the right hand edge, there are some functions that use the network to control systems that are outside of the machine. So what I find is just interesting is that they really start with a clean sheet and say, well, what, what will you, what will change if you, could, if you put some smart, smartness in this machine, not making it into more functions, but keeping it more focused on the things you really do. It's more like uh, designing the surface. That's an important thing. So thinking about this new uses and the new, li lives new design th principles. And uh, a lot about it is, is thinking of how this will work in the moment, how you will design things that work in the moment. Um, and you see that we're also changing in the, in the whole model of how we use apps and stuff. Um, and yeah, nowadays we still have the phone and we have the apps. But you see that the, the layer of the, 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 the steering layer of this information we use is, is, is going to this uh, notification, to this trigger based um, interfaces. Where this, this, you know a lot about the person from this profile and you know what he's doing at th that very moment. And if you combine that, you can deliver the, the right information, the right service at the right moment. So that's these triggers and thinking about these triggers are the new, the new interface. Um, so rule-based solutions and conversations is what what's happening now, and well, you saw this example in the in the in the previous presentation. If you were here already, um, I have I put I took a little piece of this uh, this movie about how Echo how uh, is is uh, how, how, um, uh, Uber is using the the Echo for for his service. That's uh, Alexa. Ask Uber for a ride. There is an UberX about two minutes away. Would you like me to order it? Yes, please. Requesting your ride. This may take a few seconds. Oh, there we go. Continue. Edwin is now arriving in a Honda Accord. So I can just open up the Uber app here. There you go. So you can see right here on my phone, Edwin's on the way. So it's a very short piece now. The whole interaction with the Uber driver is also in this conversation. And that's, that's an interesting, point, interesting thing that this uh, Echo has done by uh, just to give 
the first step how we can communicate with our services through voice and through a dialogue. Um, so the echo is, is very nice. It works very nice. I have one, uh, at, and I use I use it for my mostly as music player. But still, it's very it's, it's very smart in in uh, understanding you. But mainly, it's interesting how you can use it as a service. So Uber uh, is in the echo, but it's also in your Facebook Messenger. So they have now made a conversational UI that's in the in the in the platform of of uh, the Messenger of Facebook. If you are discussing about a place where you want to eat or whatever, you can order an Uber right from this app, from the Facebook app, Messenger app. And you don't have to have the Uber app on your phone anymore. So it's really shifting how this, these worlds will work. Uh, also, uh, last week, Google announced their big, uh, big strategy for this year and after to get all the stuff that they're doing in, in their search to a kind of an AI world. And they also introduced this echo-like thingy. And uh, I've also this m movie where you can... Uh, okay, Google, play the morning playlist. Okay, playing morning playlist. Great. Okay, Google, play music in all rooms. Okay, Google, I'm listening. Your flight to Portland is delayed by 30 minutes. Change my dinner reservation tonight from 7.30 to 8. Your reservation at Andina is now confirmed for 8 p.m. Hey, Google, text Louise. Flight is delayed. Dinner moved to 8. Okay, message sent. Morning. Morning. Hey, Google, turn the lights on in Kevin's room. I thought you finished that already. <gasps> um, I forgot. Okay, Google, what's apples in Spanish? Manzanas. Hey, Google, has my package shipped? Yes, it's already shipped. It'll arrive tomorrow. Ooh, is that for me? Maybe. Interesting. Okay, Google, how many stars are in our galaxy? Well, there are about 100 to 400 billion stars, according to space.com. Which star is the closest? According to NASA, the nearest star system is Alpha Centauri. Can you show me what it looks like on the TV? Okay, Google, how's the traffic from Pebble Rock School to the airport? Your normal route has heavy traffic. There's a faster one that'll take about 35 minutes. I've sent it to your phone. Okay. Go! Dad! Hey, Google? What's on the calendar today? The first event is Space Day at Kevin's school. It starts at 8 a.m. Space Day. Are you ready, buddy? Ready. So this, oh, this, this is the ideal Google world. I don't, I don't know if this is a utopian or a dystopian uh, world, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I doubt it. Uh, but, but well, it's interesting how Google really shifting its uh, its 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 arrows, shifting its focus on these these kind of conversations and this kind of uh, AI world. Um, and, and Chris Messina, one, is someone who now works for Uber, uh, works a lot of things, was saying, and I think it's a nice, uh, nice, nice thing to, to, to think about. And we have now all, this, all the screens everywhere, and every, every child thinks that every screen is a kind of a touch screen. Yeah, we know all those movies. And he says, well, maybe in the next uh, generation or next 10 years, children will be expecting that you can talk to every product around you, that you can have a conversation with everything. So that's that's an interesting uh, thought, I think, um, and that's 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 and that's something we are really busy with this haptic part and how you can feel stuff and how you can be uh, like this this example from someone who th really thinking how can you make this this world around you more tangible, more feel. F f he made this kind of an art piece, but he has put some uh, some some muscle constructors on his shoulder and he has made a kind of a receiver from uh, for for uh, the the signals from uh, surveillance cameras so every time he, he walked past by a surveillance camera his shoulder is contracted so he really feels that he is he's he's, he's he's watched so but this this is the way i think we will can use and we will will more and more have a kind of a 
embodied interactions, feel, you more feel the data also like that. And this is a kind of, an, uh, uh, of course, an art, art piece, but, but you can imagine that in your clothes for the future, you will have this kind of, this kind of system that lets you feel the, the data around you. And we have that, of course, with the, with the uh, Apple Watch now that, and all the other watches that really has an important part for how, what you can feel. Uh, and now just the, the, the haptic app engines, as they call it, feels really as if you are tapped on your, your shoulder. And that, and, that, and that works. I use it for, for kind of a navigation and that kind of stuff where you can get a very strong uh, rhythm if you have to go to the right and a lot slower if you go to the left. And you can really feel that kind of stuff. Uh, other companies are going a little bit different. They make this kind of things and it's kind of a strange device. It gives you kind of a pain a sensation if you are really doing stuff that you don't shouldn't do. They say that it really works to stop with smoking or something well I don't know if that's really the way to go but uh, well it's a strange device I have one and it's not so nice to to wear uh, a next step is also what Google presented also uh, uh, last week I think is is the project solely they have a kind of a radar radar function and you can now they they, 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 they track if you are in the neighborhood of, of in the in the, yeah if you're near the the watch and you can you can uh, yeah have a kind of a gesture like thing and uh, and in that way you can steer the new interactions and well this is a first prototype and they have kind of a development kit now in the in the markets so we'll see what happens there and if this is a new way of interacting with things and stuff um, but what what's interesting here is is that all the products we have and all the things to do will 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 be more like a platform for services more like a thing that that will, will, will have a kind of a service component in it. And uh, Bosch is, for instance, really investing in making all the, their products in a service platform. They have a, uh, a drill that, you that has a Wi-Fi connection, but where you also can make services for the drill. I don't know what they expect there as a kind of a services, but also for the car. And they really put it open to, to developers to make services on this, uh, this system. And well, I like this this kind of thing. If you think about this this kind of things, you have to design. Uh, normally, we usually we, we really look to the to the outside, uh, the, the usual the visual design or the, the product design. But the basics of all these is is what is under under the under the hoods is what uh, what is hidden. There's the service design and the, the infrastructure and all that kind of things. And and that's where really the the big big challenges for designers and for for makers uh, is now is now is and and there was a very nice article from tom Coates who's making a kind of a service think ton that is uh, is really he was really uh, yeah really making a point that you not really have to look only for the uh, the way the products will behave with this, with things but especially also look to the service the service layer that's the the thing where the difference will be made so he makes some kind of uh, uh, kind of l rules for these new services that really, really f helps you and be are, are understandable and are uh, uh, good for you and you don't have to program yourself. And well, I think it, it's a very interesting way to look at how we have st products and services, and the services in the end will will be a very important part for making this uh, the service layer. Uh, how this will work out. So, um, to sum up this, this, this thing, uh, the, 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 fr the things that happens, uh, I think, is that, that we see that the hardware is moving into, if the, if the hardware is connected to, uh, to the internet, we will see that the hardware will become a kind of a platform for, for new services. And these new interactions uh, are not only focused on the screen. We, uh, we see all these examples with screens on, on fridges and stuff, and that's not the way to go. We have to think about new ways how we interact with products and how, how we interact with these services. And conversations, that's really hot now, but it's really also a kind of a new, new way of de de discussing that. And, well, context-based, rule-based, that's the way to go. So to close off, I think it's always nice to have this, this, this movie from... Uh, some people will know it, but, but for the others, it's a really nice way to, th to see how you can go the wrong way if you design this kind of stuff and how you can go the right way. Well, we'll close with this. Uh, 
good, occasionally poor. North at Sierra, south at Sierra, east 40s. Variable 4, becoming southeasterly 5 or 6. West 40s, chromaties, 4, time, west dogger. The sharks are focusing all their attention on the offshore islands, full of young seals. By watching how the sharks hunt here, Allison has learned what time of day an attack is most likely. Here is the general synopsis at 0700 GMT. Cow in Sierra Shannon moving slowly eastwards and filling them. Sorry, that should be low in Sierra Shannon. And now the area report. Viking, north of Sierra, south of Sierra, it's rain at times, good. Westerly becoming cyclonic, good. Humber, Thames, Bedford, Leyland, Dath, Dover, Seoul, hate rain at times, good. White, Portland, Plymouth. Some places It's a nice, nice example how you can, uh, yeah, you, how you keep keep the human in mind and uh, and be aware of the uh, uh, the stubborn things. Uh, which I would say, so well, that's my uh, my little insights in what I think that will change in the in the way and how uh, we use and we will connect with our products. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys, we have time for a few questions. I, I want to ask one about. Um, the haptic things, and you said you were developing something for deaf, blind children. What is it exactly? Can you explain a little bit more what's happening there? Well, it's, it's a sleeve. You have to wear it, like, and you can touch it and stroke it. And there's one other one that has, a, has also the sleeve on, and you can feel that stroke. And you can grab it, of course, and stuff. So it's really trans trans uh, making so, so this di strokes. distance transfer. Yeah, yeah and yeah, that goes off the internet. So there is uh, the deaf, blind people that, that have a communication that only goes through touching touch, and, yeah. uh, and touch and stuff but now you can make it you know, to a more like uh, distant and you can well for the for the people that that ha are the yeah the, the how do you say that the caretakers of, of the yeah. uh, the people uh, that yeah that are deaf blind are really uh, are able now to f to feel it and now now the only thing they do is that they scream very loud because that's the only way they can can have a kind of a attention but so it, it really can help them to have a better conversation with the with the people that help them. It's like yeah. like a distance call, but then it's yeah, through touch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. through touch, yeah. Nice. Touch on a distance, yeah. Qu questions for Iskander? No. Someone? Okay. Yes, yeah. please. We have already seen uh, some examples from uh, Berg. Uh, why did they not exceed... Um, uh, reach a uh, very well business case. Why did they fail? What should they yeah, have done? Yeah, good otherwise? question. Uh, well, I th they, 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 of but they were a design agency ma mainly, or a consultant agency, and I think that that went rather well. And they start and they make that little printer, and they want to really go into that world of making products, doing making the Burke Cloud. And I think that was not really. They, I think they were too early, and maybe that product was not really right, and they put all their money in it. That's my uh, an analysis. Maybe there are but others. But, but that almost everybody that decides to develop a thing discovers yeah. how incredibly it's hard. hard. It's yeah, exactly. So that's really this, this good night yeah. lamp of uh, Alexander yeah. de Chansunio. Yeah. Yeah. We're years and years and years working on it, right? Yeah. It's not like it's a an easy making thing. a product is very hard, and well, and making and also be become then very focused and only doing that is of course also uh, also very hard. 
Yeah, and yeah, I think that's 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 mainly the reason that, that, that they try to make that work cloud as a, as a kind of a platform for things. But you see, that takes a, lo a lot of. They were also really early because you see it now only now happening with the Nest and the, the Nest Cloud and uh, and, the, and the trickies and all the stuff. And it's, it's really in the beginning still that our home is is connected. And uh, well, I think that's, that's that was their problem. Marcel, and you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, I, I think what also was a problem for Burke, they were very early to the game. They had um, an investment that um, was enough to develop the platform, but they were competing against um, Particle, back then was Spark, they had Electric Imp. They mm -hmm. both yeah. had like in the tens of millions just intended for business development yeah. budget. Yeah, so that was ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. yeah, okay. and, and they True. could like, like overcome this early stage of experiment while Burke they didn't find a valid business case. No, really sad because I think no. those were the, the brightest minds in the in the platform industry. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shame. Two more questions. Y you have one. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, in, well, then. in that case. Wait. Just. <laughs> yes. Ah, there you go. I saw you and I thought you have a question. <laughs> That's it. Wait, wait, wait. Because it's really hard she to hear. She has a talent for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is we saw that Google ad, you know, with the people. And there you were talking about we want to have conversations, but actually what that device is taking away is the conversation between those people. Because mm -hmm. the, the yeah, kid, you want that kid exactly. to actually ask his dad, dad, what's the, I don't know, what's this in Spanish or what's that? Yeah. You want to have a conversation in between the family. So what do you think is a really useful application for in-homes, for Internet of Things? Because we listened to the previous speaker mm -hmm. talking about lighting, etc. But do we really need the connected house or smart house you think well uh, need is a big word no uh, yeah why the connected light switch we don't need I think for instance uh, I don't have a connected home myself also but it will be slightly enter all kind of products that it's not really the connected home or the connected light switch but we'll, we'll see that the, the products uh, you can think of uh, the TV sets or all kind of stuff starting a little bit getting more and more connected and it will will grow into us in a way well, but I this way that, that yeah. Google does is really a kind of an ito their utopian way from well that's that's what's happening and uh, I think it's also kind of a well I will see I think I think it is not really a good thing for the market that they do this like like this I think it will e e e just like the Google Cloud for instance it's not really they're not really yeah there, there is a danger that it will break the market more than that uh, build it yeah I think I, I think just to wrap up but I think some of the, the areas where it actually works is where there's monitoring. Mm -hmm. So when do you have monitoring in your house? I have two kids. They can come and go on their own. I want to know if they're home or not. You know, that kind of thing. It's monitoring your kids. There's a dangerous side to it, but that's definitely. And I've got cats. Cats. That come in and out of the house, could bringing also in fun rats uh, and mice. Yeah. And it could be yeah. a fun part yeah. that you can see, can yeah. see what your cats do all no, on no, a day. The, the cat flap stays closed yeah. when he comes with the mouse, and yeah. it goes open when he drops the I mouse. I think there was that that someone that made a service that let that show how, how busy the cat was at during the night. That was, and well, that's, mm -hmm. that's just for fun. Very yeah, nice. Maybe that's it. Yeah. It's yeah. for fun. We yeah. need to find the entertainment yeah. angle. Exactly. <laughs>